Good morning, crew. Happy Friday. I hope you're all doing well. I know I am. And that's because, dude, we have a huge, huge update to talk about. Now, I am not a news outlet channel for this game. You know, there are plenty of other, you know, really talented, created people like Noli, Red Archer, etc. that cover the dev blogs in Payday 3 way better than I ever could. I'm not as, you know, structured as them. I can't write scripts for shit. <laughs> but this update is so damn important. Well, dev blog, I should say. Is so damn important to Payday 3 that I can't not talk about it. It's probably going to be one of, if not the only times I'm talking about a dev blog and making a video on a dev blog. But I really want to go over this and make a video about it. I can't simply just put it in like a, you know, a little post or whatever. I have to actually talk about this. Now, first and foremost, this video is kind of going to be all over the place just because I'm kind of going off script. I am going through the dev blog, you know, throughout the whole video. And I'm going to give my feedback as well as opinions uh, on it. We are talking today, of course, about the Armor 2.0 update. Now, this is a uh, update that isn't actually coming out right now. I think it mentioned when I was glancing over this earlier that we're looking at around December time, but uh, we can go from there. So we have here. Hello, heisters. Today we're talking about some of our upcoming updates to the armor mechanic, which we're dubbing Armor 2.0. This feature has been in the works since June slash July and is finally in a state where we can start showing the early design of it. Armor has been a hot topic since launch. The fact that this is bolded <laughs> is pretty accurate. Um, I would think it's safe to say that armor is a pretty hot topic in this game. Now, I haven't released an update on my uh, overview of Payday 3 since my 101 hours video, but I definitely need to though, because a lot of uh, opinions have changed, my thoughts have changed a lot, and uh, one of them being the armor system. Now, I guess I'll just put it in a small little uh, addendum here. I am not a fan of the plate system in Payday 3, specifically with the regular base game blue chunk armor. The death by a thousand cuts approach just isn't it. We know that veteran Payday players prefer the classic Payday the Heist and Payday 2 armor, while players new to Payday 3 are usually more receptive to the current armor in the game. I don't really know about this last part right here. I mean, if that happens to be true, sure. But yeah, I, uh, my opinion definitely has changed. Uh, veteran players, uh, I, I have played Payday the Heist, but I only really got into Payday. Um, in August of 2013, when Payday 2 released and everything. And uh, I'm definitely a veteran when it comes to Payday 2. And yeah, I very much prefer the armor system to that game. I thought I would like Payday 3. I did at first because I thought it was different and it was unique, but it's not sustainable. Earlier this year, we released the adaptive armor, which proved very popular, and we took learnings and feedback from it with us to develop the next step in the armor system. Okay, so... I'm not really sure if this is accurate. Uh, I just don't like the Payday 3's vanilla armor system anymore. I think I did at launch just simply because it was different. I was playing Payday 2 for over a decade. I wanted something fresh and it felt that way. But I've learned in my time now that it's completely non-sustainable. Once you run out of resources, the armor system just isn't it right now. This is kind of the change we've been looking for though. This change is currently planned for December release, so yeah, here we go, like I said. Do note that we're very early in its creation, so please be aware it may change, which is fine. I actually like that we're getting this update now, because it means that, you know, they're going to be listening to feedback, and I really hope that uh, Starbreeze is listening to, you know, the veterans, as well as the newcomers. They deserve for their voices to be heard, too. But let's, let's get into this a little bit here. So Armor 2.0 is all about building the armor you want to wear, and letting you play the game the way you want to. This is what's actually freaking amazing, is that it is player choice. Player choice is always, always, always a good thing. Having more options is very, very smart, and I really like the way this is going to shape out to be. Think of it as modding your armor the same way you would mod your weapon. With this update, you will buy the armor frame you want from the vendor, which is one, two, three, or four chunk armor, and then 
fill it out with the chunks you want in it, in the order that you want. In addition to the normal and adaptive armor chunks, we are introducing the th introducing, excuse me, the third chunk, shield, final name to be decided. This is going to be what's really cool. Shield chunks have no damage resistance, which womp womp, but they will never permanently break. So after your armor regeneration timer expires, any shield chunks you have lost will return. Payday 2 armor is back in chunk form. That right there is the biggest news. This game absolutely freaking needed this, okay? This game really needed Payday 2 armor to come back simply because Payday 3 is a horde shooter and you take damage in this game no matter what. No matter how much skill you have, you're going to take damage. And the thousand death by a thousand cuts, you know, uh, mindset doesn't really work in this in this setting anymore. I, I truly believe that, you know, the adaptive armor was a step in the right direction. And this is like a leap in the right direction. Let's keep going here. So how does armor modding work? Instead of receiving pre-made armor in your loadout like we do with other equipment, you'll unlock access to armor frames at the vendor. These frames come in one, two, three, and four chunk variants, and you unlock them at the same infamy levels as the previous armors. This change is in order to let you have different armor configurations for different loadouts. That is super cool. We're going to get into that here in just a little bit. Let's keep going for now, though. Once you purchase an armor frame, it will come with only normal chunks equipped. You can then edit the armor and fill it out with any of the three chunks, which is normal, adaptive, and shield, in any order you like. How does this affect armor stats? We have two parts here, the frame and the chunks. The frames have certain properties and stats. So we have a little graph here, or a little table, I guess, not a graph. <laughs> uh, something to note, we have uh, passive abilities as well as ammo capacity. Uh, and now the already existing consumable slots. Uh, but these two right here are not something that was tied to your armor before, and it's now going to be, which is actually going to be super interesting. Let's go over these together real quick. So armor types, we have one through four chunks with one chunk armor. Uh, the regen time here is affected by the actual chunk type, which we'll get into in a second. So uh, is with the downs, as you can see down here. But uh, first up really is the speed penalty. So one chunk armor now has no movement speed penalty whatsoever. Uh, I don't think it's going to be the craziest, biggest thing ever. I mean, really, in our eyes, it's going to appear as like a speed boost because as of right now, every single armor at least gives some penalty. Like the standard frame armor gives light speed penalty. So really, once this update does come out, if this change sticks, uh, we're going to be even moving faster with one chunk armor. However, if we look right over here to the passive ability, it says here, first aid kits replenish an additional 20 health points. I mean, that's fine, I think, personally, just because first aid kits, as of right now, after the consumable slot update came out, where they only give, I think it's like 20 or 25 flat health, uh, definitely need a little bit of a, not like a huge buff, but just a little something to pick them back up off the ground, just because they don't do too much in comparison to the overpoweredness that is the armor repair kits right now. So I think this is definitely a good passive to have for rocking one chunk armor. However, there's also a con with rocking uh, one chunk armor, which is you have 20% less max ammo uh, for all your guns. Simply put, you know, this is where you're storing kind of all your magazines for your ammunition is in your armor, which is really cool, I think. So if you don't have as big of, you know, not as many pockets because you have a smaller armor type, it's one chunk, you're going to be able to bring less bullets. So you're probably thinking like, okay, this is definitely going to be pretty much like the stealth armor, right? A one chunk. I don't, I want to move as quick as I can. This is going to be the stealth one. Who cares if I have 20% less bullets? I'm not going to be shooting more than, you know, a couple of guards uh, in a stealth heist, right? But take a look at this here. With the next type, two chunks, right? We have that, you know, light movement speed penalty like we do in the game now. The passive ability reads, if you have a tool in your loadout, which, I mean, everyone has to have a tool. You can't just unequip one, at least as of right now. You start the heist with one additional tool of that type. This is applied before the extra pocket skill. Two chunks with its light penalty might be the stealth armor type, just for this. Because right now with deep pockets, or excuse me, extra pockets, that's what the skill is called, uh, that lets you bring two ECMs, essentially. 
But if it says 50% more, right, this is going to let you bring an additional ECM because you'll have uh, with this passive with two chunks, two ECMs, 50% of two is one, two plus one is three. So you will have three total ECMs letting you shut down three more cameras, you know, uh, as well as the ECMs are kind of weird right now in the game with them like, you know, slowing down radios and cameras. I never really use them too much for that. I only use them strictly for like the putting them next to a camera and it will shut it down completely. So you got to think if being able to bring a total, if you have a full group of four, uh, 12 ECM jammers is kind of nuts. You're going to be able to shut down a lot if everyone's rocking this two chunk. So that's a super interesting passive ability. And that makes it a pretty big contender for uh, the stealth armor in my eyes anyway. Moving on, three chunks. We have the medium uh, speed penalty. If you have no throwable for 10 seconds, replenish one throwable. I like this as a passive. However, I think personally, now I'm, I'm not great at balancing anything. I've never made a game before. I do think that this 10 seconds should maybe be increased. 30 seconds sounds too much, but 10 seconds sounds way too quick. Just because if you're rocking a build that's, you know, uh, a death knell build. Everyone's getting marked by your throwables. Throwing flashbangs, throwing smoke grenades. Pretty ridiculously, I wouldn't say, oh, well, no, I will say. It's pretty overpowered right now. It's a pretty good way to play the game. Just getting those back every 10 seconds without needing to spec those two extra points in the ammo tree to be able to get more grenades back off ammo pickups, that seems very strong. You could make an argument to bring it if it was like a higher at like maybe 30 seconds or something like that. I'm just kind of worried that those that skill is going to completely drop off the face of the earth in terms of uh, usage from the players. If it's a quick, you know, I get a smoke grenade back every 10 seconds. I mean, I guess it is if you have no throwable. That's the important part. So you're really just keeping out one. You can't just spam them and everything. But I don't know. I, I think personally... You can, you know, let me know what you think in the comments down below that this passive maybe should be a little bit longer. It sounds a little strong in my eyes. We also get 20% more ammo capacity with Rock in three chunks. And actually only something I haven't been mentioning yet, the amount of consumable slots you can, uh, you know, have with your armor chunk type. So I think it's called Walking Pharmacy is the capstone and Meg now will let you bring two more. So with one chunk, you'll have four. So you can have a grand total of six if you bring Walking Pharmacy. Uh, three with two chunks, and then with three and four chunks, it is only two, so you gotta kind of keep that in mind. It's something to think about, and I like this. This is what the game was missing. Be, you know, uh, not making every single build the exact same thing where everyone has the same thing. It has to have variety where someone's like, oh, I actually only have X amount of consumable slots, or this much ammo, or now we're gonna get into chunk types. I have different armor, so it lets me play differently. You know, it, it, it really really is a good thing and i think this update so far so moving on our last one here four chunks this is the heavy movement speed penalty the passive ability is using an armor repair kit or armor bag prevents all armor damage for three seconds i kind of had a similar idea to this when i was just chatting on uh, one of my twitch streams as well as just chatting to some friends uh in my discord server when we were playing payday 3 that it would be kind of nice if like an uh, armor bag was changed to where we had, you know, Payday 2 style armor regen, but an armor bag still needs a use, right? And it could just be like a reinforcing of a chunk or, you know, kind of like an overheal or something like that for the chunk, just the one chunk. And uh, it has a little more damage resistance, which might be kind of interesting. It was kind of sounding, you know, overpowered and everything in my eyes. This might be work a lot better, just three seconds of, hey, take no damage. Um, I, I don't know if this ability would have a cooldown on anything, but I guess armor bags are limited, so you couldn't just spam this like over and over and over. But since it does also allow armor repair kits, uh, that's those are pretty easy to come by right now with hostage trading skills. So we definitely got to keep that in mind, just because every single heist, at least right now in the game, is... Uh, pretty full of civilians where you can just be getting like five armor repair kits uh, a pop especially if it's three seconds of invuln it could just be simply you know see a dozer uh you have four chunks of armor 
pop an armor repair kit in your consumable slot, just get right in his face and mow him down for those three seconds, and he's going to do no damage to you. So this is an interesting one, but it does kind of allow like a tank style type of gameplay. Um, I want to know what you guys think about this one. This one I'm also not too sure on, uh, but it's definitely interesting to say the least. And of course, with the heavy four chunk armor types, it allows you to bring up to an extra 40% of your max ammo capacity. Very good. Now, what can you actually fill these chunks with? We have chunk types, the normal, adaptive, and shield. And again, the normal is the base vanilla blue payday three chunks. The adaptive is the new-ish uh, purple chunks where they will regen if the chunk does not fully break. And then shield is going to be the new one coming out with this update, which um, I don't know if these are going to be, I think they're going to be orange, like the payday three uh, accent of orange and everything, uh, which would be kind of nice. Uh, these all have different, these chunk types have different regen times associated to their armor. And now again, you can mix and match, and we'll go down into some examples here in just a little bit. But uh, the regenerative chunk types reduce your max downs by two per chunk. Every single thing starts at six, and depending on how you mix and match, is going to affect your total number of downs. So with a normal payday three armor chunk, it adds uh, one and a half seconds of regen time, or I guess it's just one and a half seconds for your regen time for the chunk. With adaptive, it's two seconds, and with shield, it's three seconds. And it just says plus, so I imagine it's like your plus overall, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, because when you have like a four chunk uh, of normal, you know, I think that's right now 10 seconds. So that would be uh, six seconds total now, which is, you know, quicker, uh, which is good. But if you have uh, four chunks of just payday two armor, which is the shield chunk type, that's going to be 12 seconds to fully regen, slower than we have right now. So, you know, a give and take. I kind of like that, right? Uh, some notes here. If your total number of downs would go below one, you will have one down at the start of the heist instead. That is something to think about since you could have up to four chunks of, you know, minus two. So obviously uh, eight or six minus eight is negative two. <laughs> so it says here, uh, downs still can go in the negatives. If your armor setup puts you at negative two downs and the minimum number of downs is one, adding a skill to give you plus one down will still put you at negative one downs, meaning you still only have one down. That's something to think about. You know, uh, the four chunks of shield armor have no damage resistance, so it'll break really quickly. So if you go down, you're going to be needing to use a lot of uh, medic bags and everything. But since uh, you're not going to be worrying about having to refill your armor with armor bags, you're probably going to be bringing a medic bag anyway, just like as a little personal one. And I think right now, um, other than getting adrenaline, Payday 3 needs to have a little bit more use of, you know, um, Bringing medic bags, people still, I'm seeing in public lobbies, bring armor bags more often. So that would be nice. Maybe uh, after this update, we could get some more love for the ammo bag because no one's ever bringing that fucking thing. But uh, that's uh, another topic for another video here, okay? When your armor regenerates, all chunks that are able to regenerate will. So if you lost your shield chunk and are currently on an adapted chunk, once your armor regenerates, both the adaptive and shield chunk will be stored. Now, the normal chunk, meaning that up until where it's trauma damage, uh, you know, like allows you to. And then the adaptive chunk all the way up, you know, the, the full the full chunk, as long as it doesn't break. Each individual chunk has its own properties, which only apply to them and not the entire armor. So normal has a now 30% damage reduction as opposed to the 25 we currently have but there is a percent, percentage of damage taken as the permanent trauma damage still. You know, that's payday three armor. Adaptive armor has also been buffed from five to 10%. Fully regenerates as long as the chunk doesn't break. I like to see that. And then the shield, no damage reduction at all, but it fully regenerates even if the chunk breaks. While armor frames are unlocked through infamy levels, armor chunks are not. You will have access to all of them regardless of your infamy level including any future armor chunks that we add in the game. That's a cool thing that we could maybe even get different armor types. So 
This is what I mean, which is what's so huge about this update, simply because um, this isn't just backpedaling the Payday 2 armor. This is taking a step forward, taking the systems we know and improving upon them, right? Doing more with them. That is what a sequel deserves. Additionally, while purchasing armor frames and armor inventory slots will cost in-game cash, modding the frame will not, so feel free to experiment. That's good to know. While, this, while we know this is a lot to take in, we have some, ex some examples of different armor configurations. So here we go. Example number one. This is a three chunk frame and it has an adaptive and two normal chunks in that order, right? It has a total regen time of five seconds. And that is simply because we have an adaptive, which is plus two, and then a normal and a normal. One and a half times two is three. So it's three plus two. That's a total of five seconds to regenerate this armor. And uh, we have a total of two downs. That's because we're starting at six. Sorry, my uh, mouse feels a little messed up. Uh, we have three chunks, total of six downs, but we have one uh, adaptive and two normals. So that is two, three, and four. Six minus four is two. So we have a total of two downs. Movement speed penalty is uh, medium. And then we have that passive ability, which is the uh, throwables one, because again, that belongs to the three chunk armor here. And uh, our ammo capacity is at 20%, consumables, you know, it's attached to the three chunk armor. This is one with the, yeah, the orange new uh, armor system here. It's one of each, a three chunk. Now the regen time here is six and a half seconds. That is because, again, we have the, let's see here exactly, uh, one and a half seconds plus two, which is three and a half, plus another three, which is six and a half seconds, right? We only have one down here, however, and that is because, again, we're starting at six. We're going to take away one with the normal, so we're at five, uh, two with the adaptive, so uh, we're at three, and then another two with just the new shield, so we're at one. So we only have one down, which is going to be the, medi uh, the minimum, excuse me, and uh, same thing here. And when this regenerates, if uh, there's any trauma damage, which there will be if you got shot, this will be a little bit less and less and less and less. This will fully regenerate as long as it didn't fully break, uh, which it shouldn't because this should break first, right? And then this will just completely regenerate as well, just because it shouldn't have even been touched because this is what's ticking first, right? Very interesting to see. I think, personally, this is kind of something I would want to rock myself, just because no matter what, you'd always have one little line of defense for armor, right? Um, this one here kind of allows for the two, but um, has that little more damage resistance that we're looking at here. It's a reason to pick adaptive instead of just all shield in my eyes because this has the shield chunks have a heavy con. So I like that they're kind of making this like a pros and cons. There's a tough balance to it. We're having all three types. I really, really like that. Uh, and then two more quick examples here. I'm going to speed run through these ones uh, just because I think you guys kind of get the point at this uh, example here. A player who picks a four chunk frame and adds normal, normal, normal shield in that order will have the following stats. Seven and a half seconds. That is because normals have one and a half. So that is uh, four and a half plus three, which is seven and a half seconds total. Then we have one down minimum because this is going to minus uh, two downs. So we're at four. And then three, two, one for its normal shields here, minimum of one. And then since it's a heavy, it's four chunks here, we're gonna move even slower, but we get this passive where we take, uh, avoid all armor damage here uh, for a little bit. Have more ammo, plus um, doable slots as well. This last example, it is a one chunk frame of just the new shield type, right? So one chunk of armor here, this will always regenerate no matter what. Um, it's not much uh, damage resistance. In fact, it's zero damage resistance. It's not much armor is what I was trying to say, but it comes back in just a flat three seconds because it's only the one uh, shield type. You also have four downs because starting at six with uh, one chunk, you just minus off two from having one shield. So six minus two is four. Uh, and then of course we uh, have less ammo. We have this passive ability for one chunk. There's actually no movement speed penalty at all. You know, this is going to be like a quick way to move about the map. Very interesting. So to wrap up the dev blog here, the team is working hard on this feature and we're aiming to release it in December of 2024. 
Long term, we would like to support this feature with new chunk types and skills that also help you build more around the adaptive and shield chunks and not just normal chunks. Let us know what you think. We hope this will allow you to use the defensive playstyle you enjoy. And if that playstyle happens to be dodge, don't worry, your time will come too. That, just love to hear. Starbreeze, you're really going in the right direction here. The game is really starting to feel like it's getting uh, back to where it should be. Uh, honestly, guys, I think we're back. <laughs> I actually think we are so fucking back uh, just from this uh, Armored Point 2 update. Armor 2.0 update, excuse me. I'm really, really excited for this. Let me know what you guys think. What kind of builds you think you're gonna be rocking with your, you know, armor frames? What chunks do you wanna bring? Let me know. I love talking about this stuff. You can also talk about it uh, in our community Discord server in our gaming room. We love talking about, you know, Payday 3 in there and everything. We would love to have you guys. There'll be a link to it uh, in the description as well as in the video, I believe, if I can. And yeah, crew, I think that's going to do it for this one. Sorry, it's a bit all over the place. I just really, really, really want to talk about this a little bit more. I love, love, love this change. And I can't wait for December to get here all the quicker. Last few things for you guys. I'm going to be live streaming the Fear and Greed DLC on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash pizza. That is my new Twitch channel or my Twitch app where you can uh, so come say hello. Uh, I'm very, very excited for it just because Houston is going to be released with this uh, DLC as well. And as you know, Houston is my guy. I have made Houston all throughout Payday 2, so I'm very excited to have him back. So yeah, come join, come say hi, all that good stuff. Anyway, guys, enjoy your weekend. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.